Okay, on which of the following intervals is the function f of x decreasing? So first of all, it's asking me, okay, when is f of x decreasing? That's telling me that I must need to know when the slope is negative, right? Or that needs, that needs I need to find my derivative, right? Remember that derivative actually tells me my slope. So right away, I know that I'm going to be doing the first derivative test to find this. So when I find my first derivative test, I got to find my first derivative and identify my critical numbers. So let's find this first derivative by just using the power rule. Now, um, to actually do my first derivative test, remember that we not only need to find where it's decreasing, but first we need to find where that derivative is equal to zero. So we set this equal to zero. And we can actually factor a GCF here of negative 4x. That's going to give us an x squared. And if I factor out a negative 4x here, remember that a negative times a negative will give us that positive there. And we can continue to factor this because now we have a difference of perfect squares. This is going to give us three solutions, none of which are our answer. Remember that these just tell us where the derivative is equal to zero. These are our critical points or our horizontal tangents. So where our graph is going to maybe come up and stop and level off and then go back down, right? Do something where it goes down and comes back up. Or maybe it goes up, levels off, and then keeps going up. Or vice versa for going down. Right, so this kind of tells us those things. It doesn't tell us where it's decreasing. It just tells us actually where it stops increasing or decreasing. So what we do is we look off to the side. We make our number line with those three numbers. Negative 1, 0, and 1. And remember that with this process, we know here the derivatives are going to be 0. We need to find what the derivatives are going to be inside those intervals. So we plug in numbers in between these other numbers on either side of them. The unfortunate thing is we're going to have maybe some decimals here. Because there are no whole numbers or integers in between negative 1 and 0 and 1 and 0. So remember our process here. We actually take these numbers and we plug them into our derivative formula. So if something like f prime of negative 2, I'm going to plug that in here. Or I can plug it into any one of these factored forms. And I actually prefer the factored form because then I can actually find the positive negative sign much easier. So if I plug in negative 2, I get negative 4 times negative 2. And then negative 2 plus 1. And then negative 2 minus 1. And to kind of save us some work here, remember we're just finding increasing or decreasing, right? So one thing that I should have put in my annotation here, I'm looking for when f prime is less than zero, okay? When f prime is negative. So let's see what we would get when we plug in that negative two to get f prime. From here we get a positive, here we get a negative, here we get a negative. So if I multiply those together, I get a positive. So that tells me that on that interval my f prime is positive. So my slope is positive. That tells me that this is going to be increasing. All right. So we know that that can't be an answer. We're just looking for where it's decreasing. So let's continue to check with the next point, which is going to be 0 0.5, negative 0.5. So let's once again find the first derivative value of negative 0.5 by plugging it in to its factored first derivative. And remember, we just need to know if it's increasing or decreasing, so we just need to know if our derivative is positive or negative. So let's just kind of do the math here. Let's see, negative times negative is a positive here, and then look inside the parentheses. Since 1 has a greater absolute value, that's going to stay positive, and then two negatives here for subtracting, it's going to get more negative. So that means that entire answer is going to be negative. So if f prime is negative, then f, our original graph, must be decreasing. So that must be one of our answers right there from negative 1 to 0. Now we're going to try the same steps for 0.5 and 2. So let's actually plug in f of f prime of 0.5. And once again, I'm plugging this into the second or the first derivative, the factored form from before.
and we're just looking for the sign. So negative 4 times 0.5 is going to give me a negative number. 0.5 plus 1 is positive. 0.5 minus 1. Negative 1 has a greater absolute value, so it's going to turn back into a positive. So that entire interval from 0 to 1 is going to be increasing it again. And then lastly, we're going to repeat these steps for f prime of 2. So actually finding the derivative at 2. So we got negative 4 times 2, 2 plus 1, 2 minus 1. Well, negative 4 times 2 is negative. These two things are positive. So that entire interval is going to be negative. So remember that we were just looking for where f of x was decreasing. So we're looking for when f prime is negative. So we have two different areas here. And remember, we're including the entire interval. That whole section there is going to be negative, so decreasing. And this whole section here, f prime is negative, so f is decreasing. So how do we write those two intervals? Well, we have from negative 1 to 0. And we have from 1 to infinity. All right, so once again, this was kind of a long answer here. This took a lot of work. It started with our annotations. Knowing that if we need to find if f of x is decreasing, we really need to find f prime and find when the slope, the derivative, was negative. So we found that derivative, set it equal to 0 to find our critical numbers, where usually it changes. And then over here, we actually plugged in numbers in between to tell us what the entire interval in between those critical numbers were doing. All right, and that's where we get those intervals here.